Hello everybody and welcome to today's HR meeting. Um, just want to do the fire evacuation procedure so there's no alarm scheduled for today. So if the fire alarm does sound, please evacuate the building immediately. The fire exits are located at the rear and side of this room. So if you go down the stairs and meet in the War Memorial Park. Um, as normal, this meeting is currently being webcast, so, so we are live on the internet, and therefore, can I please ask that all your mobile phones are either turned off or turned to silent? Thank you. Okay, so firstly, we've got some substitutes today. Yep, so we've got Councillor Bowen standing in for Councillor Boyer, and Councillor Sanders standing in for Councillor Godson. 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 Um, and then, yeah, Councillor Parker, you're substituting Councillor Day. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Have we got any declarations of interest? Yep, Councillor Potter. Um, I don't think it's particularly relevant, but I am a member of Unison, so I ought to put that on record, I think. Thank you. And any urgent matters? No. Okay. So the first point of the agenda is the meeting minutes held on the 4th of September. Are we all agreed on them? Yeah, agreed. And then the minutes of the Joint Consultative Committee held on the 7th of December. We agreed for them? Perfect. Okay, so item six now. Yeah, Councillor Potter. Would you accept at this juncture from me, um, and I know you will be moving to say something in a minute anyway, I have a motion that I want to put before the committee uh, in regard to our the way we conduct business this afternoon, and I've got copies for everybody. Can I have a quick preview of that, please? Uh, Chair, we've, we've, we've had notice of a, a notice of motion that one of the members of the committee wants to put. It relates to the status of the exempt item. Mm -hmm. you, we, you will be moving, as I understand it, that we move into exempt at that point of the agenda. We, we would procedurally then take this as an amendment to that substantive motion at that point. That would be my advice to the committee. Okay. Okay. Uh, I mean, just to immediately say, I don't accept that this is going to be an exempt report before us. And I wrote to you the other day, um, in my own words, telling you what I believe is covered by the legislation on this matter. So we start from that premise, and there should be no presumption that we have an exempt document before us. My motion, which I think, quite frankly, should precede any proposition you put, says that that is not an exempt document. We should continue with the business of this meeting in an open and transparent way, in the way that we normally do. And I think, quite frankly, that needs to be put to this committee first of all. If the committee doesn't agree with that, then you're into other things, of course. And I've got other motions you might guess that I'll put anyway. OK, thank you, Councillor Potter. And um, what I'll do is move, take a vote on moving into exempt, and then we can look at your motion. Can I... I'll just be clear, I, and obviously I respect Marie's advice here, but that isn't reasonable in the circumstances. I'm moving that we as a committee determine that this is not an exempt document, so by definition that has to come before any proposition that it is. Okay, so we can take the vote on whether we move to exempt. I, I think, uh, if, it, if it helps, Chair, uh, we have a, an item on the agenda to move into exempt. There has to be a vote on that. There can be a debate on that. When the chair moves that motion, you, want, well, you wish to move a, a contrary amen, amendment that it isn't exempt. We can have the debate then on the, on, on the matter and, and vote on your amendment. If it falls, we'll then go to the, to the main motion. That would, that's how I suggest we should deal with it procedurally, that we should put on the floor, table of the committee the chair's motion that we move into exempt. Chair, well, 
I mean, that isn't reasonable, I don't think. Mine is a very clear proposition that starts us off with a position that I'm saying this is not an exempt document. If my motion succeeds, that's the position that we had this afternoon, isn't it? And therefore, no other motion in regards to the status of that document is relevant. Now, that's the way you should do it, in my view, and this is a perfectly proper motion. I'm giving notice that I want to present it. We've got precedent in this. There's people that move motions at council that we know nothing about. So clearly, you know, the precedent is set in that regard. And I'm very happy to pursue my arguments in this regard at this juncture. Okay, thank you for your comments. I think if we vote to move to exempt and then the outcome of that will determine your motion as well. So we'll I'll, I'll move it to private session now. But for the for the webcast and for people viewing it. Um, I would just like to give some context on the paper we're discussing now. So it is an extraordinary meeting of the Human Resources Committee. So I would like to introduce Victor Nichols, our Deputy Chief Executive, and Marie Rossenfeld, the Councillor's Deputy Monitoring Officer. So the reason for this meeting to have taken place is that the direction of the De Deputy Mayor, Councillor Keaton, who recently ruled out of order a, a request for an extraordinary meeting of full council. So the reason stated for the extraordinary council meeting was to discuss issues in connection with recent newspaper articles to enable members to be briefed about an appropriate response to the press article and provide reassurance to members about action being taken. The Deputy Mayor ruled that this request should be considered by the HR Committee to avoid breaching data protection law and to avoid discussion about individual circumstances in the large public forum of the full council. Therefore, we will consider this matter at item 8 on the agenda today. We will be looking at it as an exempt item following the vote because you know, my view is it can be interpreted as information about individual employees and former employees. Um, and therefore, I will be asking so the press, the public and third parties to leave the room I have, however, listened to both of your views and invited Unison to address the committee in the exempt session. Um, so visiting members will also be able to remain in accordance with our committee procedure rules. And I've also invited Councillor Eaches as well to discuss on this item. Okay. A couple of things apply, I think, really. Um, I think I misheard you, did I? You were talking about moving into private session. We're certainly not in that yet. Um, we will vote in private session. Okay. In regard to public participation, are you saying it's axiomatic that there is no public participation if we move into considering or it's accepted by the majority of you that this is an exempt document? Is that what you're saying? Um, what I'm saying is we are here today to look at the policy and the process, not individual circumstances. And I think the best way for members to review it is to be in private session. Can I make one point as well? I wrote to you the other day, and Marie will correct me if I'm wrong on this. Even if, even if we were to say, and you will say it as a majority, that this should be classified as an exempt document, there is absolutely no legal requirement on this committee to move into a, a confidential session. It does not have to exclude the public, even if we considered this or you consider this to be an exact document. The two things do not automatically go together. So in other words, you can say it's exempt if you want to by the majority. That doesn't mean that we exclude the public from that debate. Can I have a clarification of that, please? Uh, th through you, Chair. Under the Access to Information Rules of Basingstoke Council, there are two types of uh, exempt material. There's confidential material, which is material that's confidential by nature of uh, a, a legal ruling, court ruling. In those, those circumstances, members must go into exempt to consider confidential material. There's also a category of information called exempt information. That's defined in the 1972 Act. Uh, there's a schedule of reasons as to what qualifies as exempt. There's also a public interest test that has to be met. Even if all of those requirements are satisfied, the committee still has a discretion as to whether or not to move into exempt. Thank you, because I think that confirms the point I'm making, doesn't it? And again, probably run into the same buffers, but Marie, I think, has confirmed that with all those conditions and caveats attached to it, we could still say 
that we want to remain in public session in regard to this document. <coughs> That's the fact of that. Let me make one other point if I can, because I'll probably be able to get some indication from you at this juncture. I understand that Unison, who are here today, obviously to make their contribution, have been told, and I saw a letter confirming that they will be given two minutes only uh, to make that contribution. Can I just make this point to the committee? Unison have been proper participating members of this committee all the time I've been involved in it, have never been time restricted. Who they choose to make those representations for them is up to them, and they have somebody here today to do that for them. And on the one hand, there seems a real contradiction to me, really, if there is a denial of public participation because of the area that you're moving into, it's a bit ironic to be quoting the public participation time limit to somebody wishing to speak in that way. So can you give me some guidance on that, please? Okay, so we've made a decision, well, I've made a decision as chair to allow Unison to come to the meeting because, as you rightly said, they do always attend our meetings. We welcome them and we want to hear their view. Um, so they're in the capacity as representative of the staff and they're the voice of the staff as well. So the reason why they've got the two minutes is as per the Constitution. That is wrong, and somebody must advise you accordingly. If you're going to treat them under the public participation rules, that is wrong. These, the Unison people are here as we are, as participating <coughs> members of this committee. They are not time limited. You cannot arbitrarily introduce that um, and give them a distinction, a definition that they do not ordinarily have. That is unreasonable. Okay, thank you for your points. I've read the Constitution, I've spoken to Marie on it, and I have thought long and hard about this process, and the decision is that they will be given two minutes. I have invited them to the meeting for a private session. So, Councillor Westbrook. I, I'm going to read something out to all the committee members, because I'd like you all to think long and hard about this process. When we're elected as councillors, we sign up to the Nolan principles, and one of those is to challenge poor behaviour. So it's upon us all to do just that. Having had, personally, a long working life and having seen many examples of poor behaviour in the workplace, as we all probably have at some time, even possibly being affected ourselves by it, I've seen times when it's been handled correctly. I know of others where it's been closed down and that can, has brought rise to devastating consequences. And for me personally, it resulted in a friend taking their own life. I'm not prejudging anything here, but one thing I feel very strongly about is that unless we allow those who feel they have a justified complaint to voice their concerns, then we are failing. We can discuss our policies and procedures at each meeting of the HR committee and believe that adequate processes are in place, but what we have before us is making me question that, and so we, be should, we should be looking to test that. We shouldn't be afraid to do that. We're seeing a change in this country and actually across the world and where people are speaking out, and this time they're being heard on a range of things. I can say that for me the fact that staff or ex-staff or whoever it may be have felt it necessary to go to the media says it all that they need their voice to be heard. So whatever the method, we need this to be properly investigated. Thank you, Councillor Westbrook. And I, you know, I, I agree with what you say that you know, we, we must listen to views, but there are other avenues for current staff members and ex-staff members to take through the process which we are reviewing today. I feel like the situation we're looking at now, we do owe a duty of care to our current staff and we need to protect all our employees. So, excuse me, if you're going to raise your voice in the committee, I will have to ask you to leave. So there are other avenues for people to go through. This is not the correct forum to raise personal issues. Councillor Saunders. Yeah, Councillor Saunders. I think we need to be reminding ourselves of what this committee is here for today. Uh, it was very clearly laid down the grounds upon which the Mayor referred this uh, item to this committee. Uh, this committee is not a court of inquiry because there is no possibility for people who may be named either directly or by implication to defend themselves to put an alternative case. 
there is a severe possibility <clears throat> that people may choose to misuse this opportunity to make statements that uh, would have a very negative effect on other people without any form of defence for those other people. Those other people are our staff, for the most part. I care very, I care, and including your son, madam, I in, care very passionately about looking after our staff and taking care of them. And I would not wish to see anything which would in any way have an adverse effect on any of them. If there are issues that need to be dealt with, this is not the forum to deal with them in terms of individual issues. Those must be dealt through other procedures outside of this committee, other processes outside of this committee, some of which are already underway, as certainly Councillor Potter is aware, even if other members are not aware. So those processes are underway. They can be dealt with at that particular moment in time, but in a proper way that ensures fairness for all concerned. I certainly do not wish this to become a, um, a cover-up, but neither do I want this to become a witch hunt. And I think it's in grave danger of becoming so at the moment. Okay, so last speaker, Councillor Westbrook. Thank you. Last speaker, Councillor Westbrook. Okay, I, I hear what you say, and that's why we. I think we should be seeking an independent inquiry and then all sides of this get the opportunity to voice their concerns and uh, I don't know why, why we're here and uh, it's not being agreed to. Okay, thank you. So, um, for me, we will be moving into private, so we I will be having... Do that, I have a question. I put my hand up several times before anybody... Okay. Asked. What I want to ask is, from taking up from a comment that you've made just earlier, is that do you um, anticipate that we, this committee will be discussing any individual circumstance, either of a current employee or an ex-employee, during the process of this meeting? Uh, Chair, if I could help. The, the legal test is that it is likely that. If it is likely that, uh, individual circumstances will be discussed. And, being candid with the committee, I can't see how you can begin to discuss this report without, without um, hearing a bit more about individual circumstances. So that is the legal test, and in my, in my view, and I've taken external advice on this as well, we, we think the test is met. But there is a discretion for the committee, um, and you have to weigh, in, in making that decision, you have to weigh in the balance all the competing factors. Final comment, Councillor. It's not a comment, Chair, it's a question. Um, if we then go into exempt, are you then saying you will allow discussion of individual circumstance? No, we're not saying that. We're not allowing personal circumstances to be discussed. Okay, so... I've got a, I've got a sorry, point of order. No, yeah. thank you. Well, you can't say no, thank you. Okay. I want it, if I may, as a point of order, to be recorded absolutely clearly why you are restricting Unison to two minutes as regular members of this committee. Can you just make that very clear for the webcast? Similarly, why are you excluding Coldit from speaking today as well? Can you be absolutely clear in your description of that, please? Okay, so on the Unison point, I will be changing the time limit to four minutes. And... I've, I've already written it down, Councillor Potter. That was a decision I made earlier this meeting. And in points of um, public participation, as per the Constitution, we will not be inviting public speakers. I've got to indulge me on this because it's for the record. Again, in terms of that four-minute restriction for Unison, that by definition is treating them differently to other members of this committee. They are not usually treated differently. Now, where... Is that judgment about restricted time coming from? Um, I disagree with that. Visiting members get four minutes. They will have four minutes today, as will Unison. So, so members, I have taken advice on how we should treat this report. I appreciate members' concerns that we work in an open and transparent way. 
However, sometimes we have to balance that approach with our obligations to our employees and our responsibility to be, good at, be a good employer. The law allows us to do this. We have a discretion when dealing with exempt information, whether to discuss it in public. And in this case, I think we have a clear duty of care to our staff and especially any staff currently on sick leave to respect their privacy and well-being. It would be impossible to properly consider this report without revealing personal data. For this reason, I am moving that we consider the report in private. We will not debate this as I'm now putting the matter to vote, so do I have a seconder? I second that. Thank you. Are we agreed? Agreed. Okay. So, um, so I now propose that following the agreement with members that the meeting will now become confidential by passing the motion that according to section 100 a4 of the local government act 1972 the public be excluded from the remainder of the meeting of the meeting on the ground that the public interest in maintaining the exemption overweighs the public interest in disclosing it and therefore exempt information is likely to be disclosed as defined to the appropriate paragraph 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 of Schedule 12A of the Act. The webcast will now be turned off. So we're now back into public session um, and then for the purpose of the minutes we have had a discussion on the recommendations. We've gone into detail with Victor on the purpose of the report, on how we deal with staff and issues um, and we have agreed the following resolutions. So the first one is that the committee noted the report. We noted the ongoing management action in progress to respond to the, the key workforce indicators and people management information for the law and government governance unit for years 2016, 17 and 2018. We also put in an amendment for that from which was raised by Councillor Sanders, which will be a report is brought back to the HR committee in June to review the progress made in relation to the analysis and well-being, I can't remember, well-being of sickness absence and the ongoing mm -hmm. ongoing action is progress to it, I thought sorry, expand it to, to report, report report it. It will be. Okay, so thank you. Sorry. Oh, well, you said it out earlier, so I do agree to it. But can you please you just? So a report is a report is brought back to HR committee in June to review the progress made in relation to the analysis and interpretation of sickness absence and the ongoing action um, in progress to respond to the. And then there was a bit off the other bit which is on the, actually on the, yeah. To respond to the key workforce indicators and people management information for the Law and Governance Unit for the years, and it stopped after Law and Governance Unit. I can't read it out again. And then the final one was that we recommend that an action plan be developed by the Head of Human Resources and Organisational Development to improve signposts into the provision of training and education that is available to deal with sickness absence, including references to the Council's flexible working options, and to respond to the recommendations in the Stevenson Pharma Review of Mental Health and Employers, with, and a report back will be brought back to this committee. I'd just like to say, you know, on behalf of members, that this is an ongoing review of the policies and as a council we take these matters very seriously. So I would like to say thank you to the Deputy Chief Executive for his review of the matter and to the members of the committee for attending and your response. Thank you. Yeah, can I just ask for clarification? Yes. The, the, we've had this sort of uh, uncertainty as to the, uh, rec the, the motion put forward by Councillor Sanders. Do, are you expecting to receive data at the point I made in relation to then the ongoing hopefully improvement in yes in, in uh, absence uh, by members of that unit yes. okay thank you councillor potter is that a question or well, no I, I think i'm entitled chair i mean having got to the stage you have 
Under the webcast, I'm entitled to say, am I not, that some of us disagreed with the recommendation and I sought an external inquiry into the matters that are before us and that was rejected by the committee, or the majority of the committee. That needs to be on record. Okay, thank you. So I will now close the meeting at 10 to 5. Thank you.